Hi guys, Phil from One Wall Studio here, and I'm actually here to talk to you today about the greatest tool in any engineer's kit, the EQ. And more specifically, I'm going to talk about the greatest technique ever invented by anybody who's ever used an EQ, and it is called the seek and destroy method. You'll notice that a lot of things in mixing are subjective, so let's start with the drums. I love getting drums that sound like this, real aggressive and angry, but to be completely honest, I feel like sometimes they stick out a little bit too much. There's just a little bit of tonality that I want to tweak. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my handy dandy EQ. I'm going to move it to a place anywhere in the chain. I'm actually going to do it after the compressor this time in the kick. I have this pre-EQ going on and then boosting the crap out of this really low end part. And ooh, yeah, it's all over the place. Cutting 100, leaving some room for the bass, and boosting at 3K, and boosting at 8K. I'm doing crap loads of additive EQ here. But with all that additive EQ, sometimes comes artifacts. And I think the kick is a little bit too clicky and not enough punchy. So let's seek and destroy. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move my EQ band. And I'm going to sweep it. Thing I'm looking for is a click. All right, I found a little bit of a click there, and I just kill it. Now what that actually did is multiplicative. Not only did I kill the noise that was annoying me on the kick, even though you might not have heard it, it's fine. It now just also opened up a whole bunch of space right there, right at that 3.7K range. Seeking and destroying is a really quick and easy way to get rid of frequencies you don't like, but it's also a way to find things that you do like. As an example, the guitar part here. I'm going to add an EQ. I like this little part right here just a little bit because it adds some body. Oh, but I like that more. I like a little bit of honk. And if I get rid of that, I don't like how thin it sounds. So just to give it a little bit more honk, I'm going to do that. Now, it may not sound right to your ears in solo, but I like how it might come out in context. See? A little bit of 500 hertz there just thicken things up a little bit. So you can use this technique of sweeping and finding things to mix really, really fast. Now, a good example of how I do that with a non-graphical EQ is I'm going to do this to sweep and find the frequency that I like in the snare. I feel like right here's the sweet spot. That puts too much emphasis on it, so I'm going to cut back a little bit, turn it off. Now hopefully that helps you out a little bit. With that, you can find the fundamentals of notes or the places you like. So if I wanted to add more boom to the kick. Right about here. That's about 60 or 59 hertz on this kick. So you can really fatten things up by finding the area that sounds best to you. 
So now it stands out a little bit less with the click in the mix and is a little bit more felt. I hope you learned something today about seeking and destroying, about using the EQ to the fullest potential. I only showed it on a couple of sources, but you can use it on pretty much anything and you can create space in the EQ puzzle any way you see fit. If you have any other questions, concerns, comments, things you want me to cover, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll be happy to get to it. This is Phil signing off from One Wall Studio. Thanks and see you next time.